It's a gospel on the radio talk show. A show about dreams and visions and a church that is indeed triumphant, alive, and well. For the church, triumphant is alive and well. Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio talk show. I'm your host today, Joshua King, and I'm here with... My dad, Pastor Jack King, as well as my sister, Sarah King. And it is great to be with you all today. As you know, this is a show about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, live and well. And so at this time, I want to introduce the man of the hour. This is a special (laughs) show today that you're listening to. This is show number one thousand huge milestone in the radio industry and so i want to introduce uh pastor jack king uh and welcome him into the show welcome it's good to be here glad to have you uh so one thousand shows huh that's right that is quite amazing right very very i'm sure you're very proud of all the things that you've been able to accomplish here on this radio program also want to welcome in uh, my sister, who has been a part of the show since its inception. Yeah. Um, so, welcome to the show, Sarah. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Glad you are here as well. So, I believe there are some rules that your listeners are used to hearing, and That's I'm going right. to let you take it from here and go over those. No sports, no politics, no doctrine, and we always speak well of one another. Those are good rules. Yeah, they've served me very well over all these years. Yeah. So, I, it, it, curiosity. Okay. Where did those rules come from? Uh, that's a good question that I don't even really know. They just <laughs> kind of appeared. And uh, But the thing about it is that uh, sports, I love sports, but that's not what we're about. Mm-hmm. And I, I love politics, but mm-hmm. I, that's not what we're about. And we're, uh, if I started talking doctrine... Mm-hmm. You can imagine, I have people from all different denominations mm-hmm. here on this show, mm-hmm. and that would just be a, 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 I don't think it would go well. <laughs> sure. So, so we just don't do it. And of course, the thing about uh, always speaking well of one another, that's just what we should do. Absolutely. And so, like I say, they just kind of fell into the thing. And the whole thing about the dreams and the visions, that just kind of fell into place, too. Mm-hmm. It just kind of happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and uh, But they've been great themes all along because basically my theme is the church. We sure. talk about the church on the show. And uh, God in his glorious kingdom. Mm. <laughs> it's been great. Very now, good. So I'm going to throw out a date. Okay. July 6th. 2002. I'm going to ask your audience real quick before you step in. Where were you? July 6th, 2002. What were you doing? Think back. That was that was nearly going on 19 yeah. years ago. I can tell morning. you where I was. 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I was uh, anticipating my senior year in high school. Is that right? <laughs> senior year in high school i was training for the basketball team um i yeah i was working i'm sure in, uh-huh. in the yards with with you and i was uh i probably had two other jobs maybe three who knows but almost 19 years ago this show started yeah and so what what started it all? How'd you, how'd you kind of get the, get the itch, get the bug? And well, the thing about it is that I've always enjoyed uh, talk radio and radio in, in general. And I had done radio. Um, the first time I ever sat down behind a radio microphone was in 1978. I was an elder in the Open Bible Church in Pensacola. And the board asked me, would I just go and, and do the radio station and just, just do, do something because they'd already paid for the airtime for our former pastor who had left. And when I sat down behind that microphone, I just knew this was a calling for me. And then when I came to uh, Tallahassee in 1980, I went over to WCVC 1330 AM. And for two years, I did a five-minute broadcast. And then we stopped. And I did not do any more radio for 20 years until mm-hmm. God called me back to it. So I started back at CVC, 1330 AM, and uh, Alan McCall, who I had on the broadcast here just a few weeks ago, and he was the station manager at the time, and he gave me the opportunity to get back into radio. 
And so we did the start of the daily broadcast. And on Saturdays, I'd be out working, listening to talk radio. And I just thought, there's just not any good talk radio on Saturday mornings Mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I pitched the idea. And um, they said, yeah, we'll let you do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing is, I had to raise support for it. That means I had to uh, do some advertising, which brought me into the world of uh, doing uh, television or radio advertising, writing ads and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I asked my daughter, Sarah, mm-hmm. if she would go with me to co-host mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that first Sunday or Saturday morning. Because at, at that time, it was called the Gospel on the Radio Saturday Show. Right, right. And uh, Sarah must have thought I was crazy. Did you not? Well, remember, I grew up with you, so I was used to it. <laughs> it didn't seem crazy to me. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. we, 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 we do have an acquired taste for your brand of crazy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so, yeah, Sarah, um, you, so you were, you were a part of it from the start. I was. And so beyond the, um, uh, the thoughts of crazy, what else were you thinking as you got into this? I... I'm pretty sure I was thinking, I don't want to do this. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. It's not really something that I ever thought, oh, yeah, I definitely want to be, Mm -hmm. I -hmm. want everyone to hear my voice and Mm -hmm. I I have things to say. That's not me. But yet you stepped out of your comfort zone and you did it anyway. You went with it. Yep. So what was that like, that first few times of of getting, you know, doing the show and... (laughs) Uh, sitting through a broadcast. What, do you remember uh, what that was like? Tell us your experience there. Well, first I'd say that it was interesting and exciting because it was new, and I like new experiences. Um, it was nerve-wracking because just like tonight, just like today, I have to you know, be on the microphone talking. <laughs> and, um, but it was fun. It was, it was a good time. And it was just a Saturday afternoon with my dad. Mm-hmm. So it was okay. It was good. <laughs> Very good. And then uh, there, later on, as the show developed, um, y- there was uh, a segment element mm-hmm. that, that developed. Um, and you would send her out, send Sarah out on uh, remotes. Right. 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 And so she would just randomly show up at places, right, correct? Right. Yeah. We'd, I'd find some place. Uh, find a bulletin board something mm-hmm. just how you operated in those days you'd go someplace where the people had bulletin boards of announcements and stuff like mm-hmm. that in uh, Christian bookstores and mm-hmm. stuff like that and I'd find some event that was taking place on a Saturday morning mm-hmm. at some church or whatever and I'd just send Sarah over there with her cell phone <laughs> and of course, cell phones were fairly new in sure. those days. And she'd say, she'd walk up to somebody and say, here, my dad wants to talk to you on the radio. And they were totally unprepared. Yes, but- that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Ambush interviews. Right. All right. But some of them were great. I mean, people really responded. Only well. some of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, so these, these uh, on-the-spot interviews with mm-hmm. these events, what kind of events are we talking about? We're, we're, we're probably talking about church events right. or community yeah. events in general. They were Saturday morning events like yard sales, church garage sales. Um, sometimes they had like kid mm-hmm. events with... Um, Balloons and right. jumping, uh, bouncy well, houses. Pastor Pizza, she went to, out to the Metro sidewalk yeah. and we, mm-hmm. I, we didn't know sidewalk him at that Sunday time. School. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that is that how you and Pastor Pizza met? Oh yeah, yeah. Are you kidding? No. That's great. So through through one of these on the spot ambush interviews for the <laughs> the Gospel on the Radio Saturday Show, that's how you made this this friend that you still have to this oh, day. Oh yeah, sure. In sure. ministry, and Pastor oh. Pizza has been on the show many many times. Many yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's a, he's yeah. a frequent guest. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, Sarah, your uh, so thinking back to those times when you were. Uh, going out there. I mean, you didn't necessarily know where you were going until he told you maybe Saturday morning. Right. And at that time, there wasn't like GPS on your phone. (laughs) And I was young. Yeah, she was. And maybe didn't know how to drive around the entire town, but Mm -hmm. he would have me Mm -hmm. go everywhere. And if you ever hear my dad give directions, (laughs) um, just be glad that there's GPS on your phone now yeah. because they're very long mm. and they're very detailed, but right. 
not necessarily helpful. <laughs> Things like a, 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 there's a there'll be a dog standing on the corner. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so and if you if you see a cat, you've gone too right. far. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so, but I would find I would find my place, and I would get there, and then I would sit in my car for a couple of minutes, and just. <laughs> Get up the nerve to get out of my car and go mm-hmm. to some random stranger, somebody who looked friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, who <laughs> and looked, in charge. Who looked like they might know what's going on. <laughs> right. And uh, at that time, push the buttons on my large cell phone mm-hmm. and dial into the radio because it was a call-in show at that time. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Uh, one time, I sent her down to Wakina mm-hmm. and to the church down there, and she went. And they were having a fish fry, I think, or something like that. And so she went and found somebody, and then the, the that lady's name was Rhonda. I remember. Wow. And I remember hearing somebody uh, running through the crash. Going, Rhonda's on the radio. Rhonda's on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> so, is there uh, is are there any memories that stick out to you, Sarah, of, of any of these besides Rhonda? Uh, <laughs> any of these um, on the spot interviews that you've gone to that were just memorable, like to this day? Well, there was one. I can't remember the church it was. It was some church in Tallahassee. Um, and it was smaller, and they had um, some type of a kids' day going on, and they just had so many activities outside for mm-hmm. the kids. And I just remember everyone being so happy and right, the kids right. running around mm-hmm. and thinking, "Wow, this is this is a great a great thing that I'm getting to see." In Tallahassee, and the thing about it is, Sarah it was our children's director at our church, and well, she is now back again. So she has a heart for children, and, and as a matter of fact, if you hear a voice right now, that's her son that's sitting in with us here. That's Alfie Jack. So he's he's trying to be good, but he's how old is Jack? Thirteen he's, months. He's Thirteen months. So you understand. So, uh, uh, but Sarah, do you remember going down to the park um, for the for the feeding the homeless down there? Do you remember that? I do remember that. They had brown paper bags mm. that they were handing out. And I don't even know what organization it was. but I think it was First Assembly. It was, was a doing ton that. of people there handing out food and a ton of people there receiving food. And well, that's, I thought that was one of her braver moments. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> this is down in a, <laughs> a, a, a section of town that you usually didn't want to be wandering around and let's mm. put it that way and then she just shows up and meets a total stranger there and it was a really good interview i remember uh, matter of fact we i still have a recording of that and because uh, back in those days uh at wcvc it wasn't exactly high tech <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh so I wanted to have a recording of the shows, and so I would take my own cassette player with me, and I would run the wire into the to the boardroom, and mm-hmm. I'd plug it in, and then I would do the recordings of. It. So I have a lot of those recordings. Some of them, of course, cassettes they don't hold up too well. Mm-hmm. But I but uh, I took it over to ninety four point one with Brother Doug Apple, and he put it in a high, high more sophisticated cassette player mm. and i actually was able to play that to listen to a little bit of that interview mm. <laughs> that was good it was it was mm-hmm. and uh it's the thing about it is that what was amazing to me is that she was willing to do it mm-hmm. <laughs> i mean yeah. how, many, how many people do you know that would just go walk up to strangers right and that's really not her personality but right but she was not at all uh, <laughs> <laughs> now i'd do that with, sure, and you would too, but you've never met a stranger, right? So, right, right. <laughs> there's that. So, I mean, shout out to uh, Alan McCall. One of the one of the things that stuck out to me, and normally about this time in the show, y- your listeners are used to uh, hearing a gospel song. But as Alan would say back in the day, once we get rolling, we ain't got no breaks. Yeah, I remember. So that. we're <laughs> we're gonna keep it moving because <laughs> this is show number one thousand, and again, that is a incredibly huge and special milestone in the radio industry and uh almost 19 years yes of doing this show and so we 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 want to save all this time that we can to just kind of extract all these memories that we have because i mean 19 years to work through we could do a much longer show yeah. than an hour um so we're gonna get we're gonna get to a, a song in a little bit but i want to hear uh pastor from you um as you were getting into it, the second time, because really this this show mm-hmm. was the second time around in radio for you. Right. Um, so as you are getting into it, back into it, 20 years after the, the, the original stint, and you're starting this show, 
What were your thoughts? Well, first of all, when we first started, it started because it was a live show there on, at, at 13.30 a.m., and we thought, well, it's a talk show. People will call in. Well, the first Sunday, our first Saturday that we were there, uh, a lady did call, and it was a very, very good call. It was a, a little Presbyterian church over on uh, Holton, right near Holton Street. I think it's on uh, Pasco Street there. Mm-hmm. And the lady called in, and uh, she was the very first caller. Mm-hmm. And so we thought this is the way it would always be. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, is that after that, we didn't get any callers. <laughs> and so I, I had to learn something. I said, mm-hmm. am I called to do this? Or am I not? Mm-hmm. And uh, so as a result of that, other people that I have met to say, well, I, I want to get into radio. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I said, now, are you looking to get into radio so that perhaps maybe you'll be able to draw a crowd to your church or because you think you're going to get a lot of calls as a talk radio host? If you are, you may be better at this than me and it may happen for you, but it hasn't happened for me. I'm doing this because God very specifically spoke to me and mm-hmm. called me back to radio. That's why I'm in it today, mm-hmm. because of the call of God. So here I am. Nobody's calling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're going to play a little music. Mm-hmm. Well, what we, we would do is it, we would have people scheduled to call in, people who had ministries. Mm-hmm. And so in, in those days, the show would exist in uh, – like maybe four sections. In other words, we'd get a, somebody would call, and then somebody else was scheduled to call at at, uh, at ten fifteen. Somebody mm-hmm. else at ten thirty, and and we had interviews like that. Mm-hmm. And like I say, I don't think. Do you remember the first show, Sarah? Probably not. I don't remember the content of the first show, but I do remember being there in the trailer, right? And um, Clive and right, yeah, right. Which is we got to talk helpful. about Clive, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, but, but what happened is that that one lady, she called, and she was a pastor, and she had mm-hmm. started this church over there on the south side. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but as she talked about it, she, she kind of d- d- diminished what she had done. Like, oh, well, we just had these kids around, and we just felt like we need to do something with them. And we started, I said, but I mean, I, I encouraged her. I mean, she had started a church. Right. <laughs> and she was reaching a community. And I, mm-hmm. and I just remember that so much. And I, and I think that it helped her. Mm. And so that kind of set a, a president for me, a precedent. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's, uh, that's what the show in large part has been throughout the years is a show about encouragement. Oh, yeah. It, I yeah. mean, you're bringing in guests from all over the area and they have different ministries that right, they're attached right. to. And they come in and they share about their ministries and they don't leave discouraged. No. They no. leave quite encouraged right, right. because um, th- they get to talk and express mm-hmm. what God is allowing them to do and how he's working through them in their ministry. And they've get they've been able to because of your show to share that with the mm-hmm. community at large. Yeah, and so um, you know that's no small feat in and of itself. No, no and that's the thing. I can watch the transformation mm-hmm. as people sit here. Mm-hmm. I can watch them as they begin to be transformed. Because the thing is, that most of the people who come to be on the show I've never met before. They come to the they show up here at the church where I do the recordings, and they're a little. A little leery. They don't know what I'm about. Maybe mm-hmm. they've heard mm-hmm. the show before. Maybe they haven't. Mm-hmm. But by the time it's over, we, we generally, we bond here. Yeah. Because uh, once it, you get them past the the walk up the stairs to the attic recording room. <laughs> right, right, right. And, uh, you know, and I'm not going to hurt them or anything like that. <laughs> like that. But the thing about it is that when I say dreams and visions, it's just, mm-hmm. just not my dreams right. and my visions, but, but but your vision. What right. And people, when when they uh, I call somebody, cold turkey, on the phone, I say, look, I'd like for you to come be on the radio show. They, and they, I say, we're going to do an hour. And I go, an hour? What are we going to talk about for an hour? I say, we're mm. going to talk about your passion. Right. And that's the thing that drives it. Oh, yeah. You let you let somebody loose talking about their passion, it's game on. Good luck oh, yeah. shutting them up. <laughs> I mean, my Absolutely goodness, right. you, you, right. you get somebody going about what they're actually passionate about, and you know you could easily extract an hour out of them. Uh, just let them go. Right. And right. You, you barely have to ask them a question. Just say, tell me exactly what you said. Right. Tell me what you're passionate about. Right, right. And, and the thing about it is that when we're done, the general, oh, I forgot to say this. I mm-hmm. forgot to say that. Mm-hmm. Which is great. Yeah. Because the thing about it is that 
I tell people, I said, follow your passion, follow your dreams, don't let anybody talk you out of them. Mm. Well, here, we're not trying to talk you out of it. We're trying to help you to expand it. And and a lot of times people are able to even get a better grasp even upon what it is that God has called them to do. Mm. And it's encouraging to them. And it's encouraging to me because I, I get to see this. Yeah. I get to see the excitement. And uh, and then the thing about it is that, uh, to be able to Watch the progress. Maybe they come back in a year or two. Mm. And then here, here's, here's a ministry. Sometimes people are just getting started. Mm. And then they come back and they're telling me about all the things that have happened as we get the updates and stuff. And how exciting is that? I mean, right. to, to be able to actually be involved in something. Uh, um, an example of that is r- the first year, I don't around Thanksgiving time, because we started in July, around Thanksgiving, I got a call from, from a, a Glenn Burns, mm-hmm. who uh, we'd set the call up, and he, he was going to call because it was around Thanksgiving, and we were going to make an appeal for people to bring food and stuff for the big Thanksgiving meal. But Glenn in the, Burns was with uh, he was with a Haven Arrest Rescue right. Mission, and so in the process of that interview, he started telling me about this dream that he had for a place for women, because because Haven Arrest was just, was just for men, and so uh, uh, and I'm I'm excited with him. So we pray about it on the air. We we pray over this thing to see that God would make this happen. Well, fast forward a few years, mm. uh, there was a, a little uh, a lady who was doing a website, and I saw on there a minister, Good Samaritan Network, uh, Beth Burns. Mm. Well, I didn't put the two names together. Okay, <laughs> so I invited Beth to come and talk about the Good Samaritan Network. Well, lo and behold, Glenn shows up, and I'm going, you know, what's this about? Well, it's, of course, it's his wife. Mm-hmm. They on the show began to tell me about Chelsea's house. Wow! And I'm sitting there just with my just my mouth open, my eyes bright. I'm going, and I said, "Glenn, do you not realize this is exactly what we prayed about?" Wow! That's amazing on the radio because mm. I had not heard of, about Chelsea's house. And of course, for those who, who may not know, Chelsea's house is a, is a ministry here in Tallahassee mm-hmm. for women. Right. And he told us the whole story. It was just incredible, and I was wow. just so excited. And, and of course, um, I don't mean to be taking over the show. No, you're, this is what it's about. <laughs> I don't mean to take over my own well, show. Well, I have written a book mm-hmm. called Dreams and Visions and Stories of Faith. Mm-hmm. And I tell a lot of stories in this book. And that's one of the stories that mm-hmm. I tell with their permission. They, they read it and they, they approved it. Right. And uh, talking about how this all came about and about Chelsea. And if you ever mm-hmm. get a chance... It's a great story, and I'm not going to tell it to you here. I'm mm-hmm. going to get you to buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> Which is available for purchase on all major platforms. Right, right. Uh, Dreams and Visions and Stories of Faith by Pastor Jack King. But that's just one of the stories mm-hmm. that I tell in the book that people have told me over these years of doing this talk radio show. Sure. And it's been fascinating. And uh one of the, go, go ahead I'm do your questions I, I no, just had one this is this is all about just conversation <laughs> yeah. today and just uh, walking down memory lane and uh, really just peeling back the 19 almost 19 years yeah. of this show yeah. um, but that I mean that is an inspiring story um, has there been any other times uh, where you're in the middle of an interview and the person that you're interviewing is actually inspiring you as they're telling what they're passionate about. Is there any any of those that stick out to you? Well, any, any time that, that somebody is uh, launching something, mm-hmm. that always gets me excited mm-hmm. because I understand launching. And I, I have an expression that I use on the show quite often. So how do you launch a dream? And I say, well, you put one foot in front of another. Mm. And... Uh, you just start. One of the things that uh, people need to realize about dreams and about following dreams is that you don't get the whole picture in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So I, I have somebody here sitting in, in this chair, and they're they're starting to tell me about what it is that God's called them to do, but they don't have the whole picture just All yet. Right. And and I, I always like to tell them, look, don't don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. God, God's got the details. What He's looking for is somebody to be faithful right. to begin the journey. Mm-hmm. And then he'll take care of the rest. I have a teaching that I would do back when I used to do something called Vision. It was a teaching training seminar I used to do. Mm-hmm. It's called the, one of my things is called Fish of the Future. Mm-hmm. And Fish of the Future is simply this: is that a lot of the people who will help you in ministry as you go along, they're not even saved yet. Yeah, I mean, they're they're still out in the world. Mm-hmm. But but God's gonna catch them, <laughs> and he'll clean them up. 
Sure. And and they'll be with you. And I'm just thinking about, like now, here it is, a thousand shows are doing this broadcast. Started WCVC, 1330 AM, went to 1450 for a year. And now I've been on this station, which is ESPN Radio, since mm-hmm. 2006. Which used to be a jazz station. Right, smooth jazz. And then it went oldies for a year. Mm-hmm. And then ESPN came along, and mm-hmm. they they decided to let me stay around. Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't see any of that. Yeah, when we started this, I mean, right. we I was at thirteen thirty for uh, three years, mm-hmm. and I uh, loved loved being there. It was just a little AM station, <laughs> kind of run down in a trailer house, and and uh, there's lots of stories about that. But the thing about it is that one Saturday morning, <laughs> I finished up the show. And the phone rings. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Clive, the producer, hands mm-hmm. me the phone and says, uh, Irwin wants to talk to you. He, yeah. Irwin was a, was a manager at the time. And he said, uh, that was your last show. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just done. And he said, and it's your last daily broadcast, too. Mm. And I'm going, what did I do? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> what did I do wrong? And he said, we're closing up. We're closing up. And they did. That was their last day. On mm. Monday, they, they at least it to a Catholic group. And, of course, the format totally changed. Mm. And then the, I did a few uh, shows on the Internet and then went to uh, 1450 AM, which was I, I was already doing my daily broadcast mm-hmm. there already. Mm-hmm. And the Lord told me I'd be there one year. Mm-hmm. And it was very clear. He said, you'll be here one year. Mm. So when the year came to was coming to an end, I'm going, well, God, what <laughs> what's, what's next? And I uh, I inquired at some other stations and stuff, but it didn't seem right. And then the day that uh, I'm, I'm down at the uh, radio station, which was Smooth Jazz at the time, and uh, of course I worked there, and the uh, I didn't work at the radio station. I had other things I, mm-hmm. I had to do there. <laughs> and uh, the Lord just said, talk to the manager, just talk to him. Mm-hmm. And he's standing out on the porch, and I, I, I approached him about it. I said, Would, have you ever considered doing any religious broadcasting on your station? And he looked at me and he said, well, actually... Mm. I've been looking for somebody. He says, I've approached <laughs> three different people. They've never gotten back to me. Wow. And I said, well, I think you found your man. <laughs> wow. And so I took him a copy of the show. He liked it. And like I say, we've been, you know, the guy's been working this thing out for all, mm. all these years. What started there at uh, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. And that's where the ta- change come in. Right. Because... We're not doing it on Saturday anymore. Right. So got to have a new Can't name. Can't be the Saturday show. Yeah. So I went in to, with him after he'd already said, yeah, we're going to do it. He said, well, we need a new intro to do, mm. redo the intro. Mm. And so I'm sitting there in front of the microphone, ready to do the intro. He said, well, what are you going to call the new show? <laughs> and, uh, and I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> and just off the top of my head, I said, gospel on the radio talk show. There you go. And so we started at 10 o'clock on Sunday. Then they moved me to noon mm-hmm. for a while. Mm-hmm. And then when ESPN came in, I remember the manager, the new manager, came in, talked to me about it, and I thought, well, this has been fun. I'll see uh-huh. you later. Right. So, oh, no, no, we're going to keep you around. He said, we're going to move you to 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, that's fine. So we did that for, uh, let's see, up until just recently. Mm-hmm. And then, then uh, the schedule changed. They, they moved me up to 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm still happy to be here at 6 o'clock in the morning. There you go. Whole new audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the, uh, the parents of young children. Mostly, I'm sure, because <laughs> if they're anything like me, those kids don't let you sleep. But that's a different story for a different day. Right. right. So early on, so you had some key, you know, people and players um, really help launch this for you. It, it was not a, a one man act. Um, so of course, there's you, and then there's Sarah. Um, who else was was there, kind of involved in the beginning of this to kind of help well, you? That would, that would be Clive, Clive uh-huh. Jones. Uh, sure. Clive Jones is, is a, a, a he's, uh, his background. Is, he's from England. Sure. And he has a, a of course the English accent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. he was, I think he had worked in radio on Saturdays. In other words, he was part timer because mm-hmm. he had a regular job. I think he worked for the state. And so radio was kind of a part time. He would, he would. Uh, as a matter of fact, he had worked at WTAL for a while, mm-hmm. and so this was, he was there on just on Saturdays, and uh, he was unfamiliar with the equipment. Mm. <laughs> but the interesting thing about it is that before we launched this talk show, um, WTAL was talk radio. Mm-hmm. Okay, they were a little small station down there on Park Avenue, and uh, they had to close up. 
Okay, so the people who were there, the, the talkers, mm-hmm. they wanted to continue doing talk radio. But now TEL was closed for a while, and they, they found it was relaunched under a different, total, totally different uh, mm-hmm. um, setup. And so they went over to WCVC and started doing talk radio there. Hmm. It didn't last very long, but mm-hmm. the thing that happened was it. If that had not happened, then CVC would not have been equipped to do talk radio yeah. because of the call in and, and all the other things they had to do. So, so God had orchestrated this mm-hmm. so that they had the setup to do talk radio, but nobody was doing it at the time. So, but the problem is that Clive didn't know how to operate it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, I called, actually, I went by his place where he works now. I was trying to get in touch with him because I'd love to have had him to come back and just give us some comments about that mm-hmm. thing because he didn't know me. I didn't know him. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that the manager said, told me, well, there's going to be a guy come in today and he's going to start doing a talk radio show. That's all Clive. And I'm mm-hmm. not even sure he knew that. <laughs> So, so Sarah and I, we show up, and he tells me, he says, I don't know how to work the microphones in there, in the in, oh, the, wow. in the talk show area. Mm-hmm. And he says, we'll have to go on the air before I can make it work. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the producer. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. And so, they, um, fortunately, he was able to get them to work. Sure. And then they had given me a, a transistor radio to listen to instead of having regular earphones like we're using here tonight. Mm-hmm. The transistor radio was to hear myself back. In other words, it would, I was actually hearing it off the air. Oh, wow. So you had a delay. But the problem is, is on that tower, they also had rented space out to 1410, <laughs> which was at that time was a, a, a black gospel. Uh-huh. <laughs> so instead of hearing myself over WCBC, I'm hearing uh, this black gospel <laughs> station. And uh, that was kind of difficult. So you're getting some uh, some words fed to you, bleeding into uh, your broadcast. Try, trying to process through all of that was, was a bit of a challenge, but... Uh, but we, the thing is, is that Sarah stuck with me, mm-hmm. and now she stayed with me about a year, maybe a little longer than that, and then she decided to uh, change career paths again because she had been in the, doing massage therapy, and now she wanted to go back and uh, pursue her uh, education degree, mm-hmm. which just meant that it just wasn't going to work anymore for her to be with us. So I'm, I'm, I'm on my own now. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so what happened was it, because I always had uh, people um, scheduled to call in, but every now and then we would actually have a live guest come into the mm-hmm. studio. And usually if, if, if we had a live guest, they would do a half hour segment rather than 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And so one Saturday morning, I had a, a pastor here in town scheduled to come and be on the radio with me and he calls me about 15 minutes before i'm supposed to go on the air we're talking about live now Mm -hmm. and says my mother just had a heart attack or something we've rushed her to the hospital and he says and i'm I'm thinking of course yeah (laughs) and you got to go take care of your mother and it dawns on me i got an hour to fill here oh wow and uh, i got my gospel music (laughs) Uh (laughs) but we got we to do this thing. And that was one of the best things that ever happened to me mm. because I, I realized that I could, I could do an hour of talk radio by myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was one of those platforms, one of those step stones. You, know, yeah. you, you, learn, you learn how to do it. And basically, uh, you talk about what's, what's on your mind. Yeah. <laughs> and you could fill that hour as long as you had your gospel music. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because gospel music gives me a little break. And, um, well... Also, I love gospel music. Yeah, I know you do. We all know you. You love gospel music, um, and so playing years and years of gospel music, uh, you've heard. Uh, if there's been a thousand shows, you've heard over a thousand uh, gospel songs at least. At least, right? Um, so you've got to have a favorite in there. Absolutely. All right, so share with your audience well, the, on your 1,000th show. I played this on the first show of the talk show, and I played it on the first show of the music show that we do. And I've never played this again on the music show. And I told Doug Apple, if you ever hear it again, that's not good news for you. <laughs> it's called John, John Saul, by Gold City. Jasper wants 
That is the favorite song of your host, your normal host, Pastor Jack King, uh, on his 1,000th radio broadcast here at the Gospel on the Radio talk show. Right. Um, so, uh, welcome. If you're just joining us, again, we're, we're celebrating and we're walking down memory lane. This is show number 1,000, a huge milestone marker in the the radio industry, and uh, we've just been sharing memories. We've been sharing uh, things that have inspired us um, throughout the years. Uh, if you missed it earlier, the question was, where were you on July 6, 2002, the very first uh, broadcast for this program um and so uh, i'm gonna bring sarah in uh one more time here and just ask through all this again you've been here from the very beginning the very first show you were a part of and, and on and on what is there any inspirational uh memory or moment or show in particular or just something that you've taken away from seeing uh you know pastor jack do this for so long is there is there anything that you can take away from any of that well i think the thing to take away from this radio show and pastor jack is that if god instills something in your heart he's going to make a way Amen. even if it seems difficult even if nobody else understands it um and the show has proven that time and again because that's exactly what exactly what these ministries have shown us you have these people on week after week and they tell you about these dreams that they had and then they went out and did them and they're making them come true. Right. Well, the, the thing the thing is, is that um, when you have a passion, when, you, when you're driven by passion, mm-hmm. it's amazing what God would do. And I, I say this, when you follow God's uh what God lays in your heart to do, it'll always be more fun than you ever thought it possibly could be. And, and this has been, well, I mean, obviously, to to do what I do and to, and to do it consistently, right. you have to love it. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, I love doing what I do. And one of the things that people might be interested to know is how do you get the guest? Oh, <laughs> taking my taking my questions from me, I see. You've been looking at my well, notes. You ask it. No, it, okay, so... How do you find your guests for the show? Well, the thing is, is I have this basic rule that if I meet you and you're involved in ministry, then that means you're supposed to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, all kinds of ways. For instance, one time I was at a Subway restaurant that used to be down there in the Capitol Plaza. Mm-hmm. And I was walking out the door. And I let the door kind of slam. I, it, I didn't really let it slam in the lady's face, but it kind of seemed that way. <laughs> and mm-hmm. So I turned around to apologize, and I had on a shirt that said Sunfest, which is a youth conference we used to do. Mm-hmm. But she was intrigued by the shirt, led to a conversation. Mm-hmm. And then she ended up being on the radio show with me and uh, mm-hmm. had a tremendous uh, testimony. I'm not going to go into all that right now because some of it, I would have to remember all the details of it, but it was a, a, a tremendous testimony of healing in her family mm-hmm. that she shared with us on the radio. They great radio, yeah. but that's how we met. <laughs> because I sort of let the door slam in her face. <laughs> uh, there have been uh, one time I'm going up Tram Road mm. and uh, Pass by the, a, a truck and a trailer going down the road opposite way, mm-hmm. flat tire on the trailer. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the, what was happening, there's a guy driving a truck with a trailer behind it, and then somebody was falling behind that, that thing. I passed on by, and I saw that situation, and the Lord told me, he says, you need to go back and help those people. Mm-hmm. And I said, Lord, I'm busy. I got to go. He says, you have what they need. Well, I'm thinking, okay, so I'm pretty good ways past by that time so i had to turn around Mm -hmm. and and what the lord meant was that the trailer that was had the flat tire i had one just like it oh i see and at my house which is not far from there Mm -hmm. i was able i was able to get it so anyway so i i stopped there and started talking to him well then uh, in the process of it the guy that was that was in the pickup truck falling behind Mm -hmm. said uh i know you (laughs) And I said, yeah, you look familiar, too. We had just briefly met once before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it just turns out that his name was Henry Miller. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. And Henry Miller is another one of those regular guests that I've had on the show over the years for many, many times. He's a he's a pastor, singer, does gospel music, and uh, we've had great we've had great shows. And I've been mm-hmm. I've had compliments many times about the show when Henry comes because we we just connect so so well in ministry and dreams and things like that. But that's how we met. We <laughs> this sure. just driving down the road, <laughs> and and uh, all kinds of ways people yeah. have brought people. Uh, God has brought people across my path. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, well, would you like to be on the radio? Mm. Some people are afraid of it. Sure. And, but some people are willing to, to you know, get up their courage right. <laughs> and come and sit down and talk to me or talk with me about their dreams and the visions and their passions. Yeah. And uh, like I say, when people start talking about their passion, right, it works. Absolutely. 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 So in all these shows – that you've done are there any is there any show or or a couple shows maybe you can, maybe you can key in on one uh, even though there's so many is there is there a show that sticks out to you as maybe a favorite not maybe the favorite but a favorite up there well i can say that the two shows that i, I can say i, I really re- thoroughly enjoy one was with coach bobby bowden mm-hmm. and i did not get a chance to get him in the studio we tried that but that didn't work out yeah so I was able to do it over at ninety four point one. Brother Doug Apple was able to help me do that because I've always uh, just really loved and appreciate Coach Bowden. Not yeah. not just because of football, but sure. because of his his testimony and his stance for the gospel. Right. And uh, I told him, I said, "We're not going to talk football." He said, "Well, daughter, we don't want to talk about football." He said, "We want to talk about the Lord." I said, "Well, we're going to talk about the Lord," and we did. Yeah. And it was tremendous. And also, uh, of course, uh, uh, Joshua who. who by the way, if you if you tuned in, you said, well, who is this guy? This is my son. And if you also, if you hear the intro to the show, that's him. That's his voice. And he's done this, been very gracious to, and now as he's gotten older, his voice has developed and he just has a wonderful <laughs> voice. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, Joshua had a student. He was hmm. teaching at Rob Middle School and he had a student who happened to be the granddaughter of Gene Deckeroff. Yeah. <laughs> and so I had a chance to meet him as a result of that and he was on the show with us. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things about interviewing uh, uh, Brother Deckeroff, and I say brother because he is, he is a believer, is that you don't really interview Gene Deckeroff. No. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> you only think you're interviewing Gene <laughs> That's right. Gene That's, right. That's right. Uh, the first thing I mentioned at the very beginning of that, uh, of that broadcast, I said something about Pensacola. He said, oh, Pensacola, were you in the Navy? Mm-hmm. And then there you go. That was it. That was, that was it from there. He started telling me about his father was, was career Navy and, mm-hmm. and, and, and just kind of went off with that. But we, it was a great show. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, when, uh, let's see, Brother Apple who also helped me do that mm-hmm. over 94 point. He said, I tell you what, I'm going to air this on uh, 94.1. He did both of those uh, mm-hmm. on uh, the six different times on 94.1. He oh, wow. he aired those that interview with those two two guys. And uh, yeah, those were, those were memorable. But uh, so many yeah. people uh, of course, having um, having built a relationship with with Glenn and Beth Burns over the mm-hmm. years, and, and their passion for ministry, uh, Renee Miller at City Walk, and mm-hmm. and her passion for what they do, and that's really the thing. Yeah, uh, like I say, Henry Miller, I've enjoyed. I've had Alan McCall back on the show twice since we've been doing it, and of course, if it hadn't been for Alan, I mean, mm-hmm. this would have would have never happened because he he believed in me. Yeah, he he, he gave me a chance. To, to follow my passion right. and so I've always be very thankful for him and whenever he comes back we, we take a little trip down memory lane and talk mm-hmm. about radio because he, he loves radio and the thing about it is that if you love radio then you are of a, of a strange breed mm. <laughs> but, but people who do yeah. we love it and yeah. whether, no matter what kind of radio you're in I mean it doesn't have to be religious it could be sports or whatever it's a calling, and and it's it's just something about it. You just love doing it. Mm. And Alan's like that. I just saw a Facebook post that he put in. And he's, he was on his little station over on the on the uh, west uh, east side of town, mm-hmm. and he says, "Just loving doing what I do." And I said, "Boy, do I understand that? <laughs> you really do." <laughs> That's right. So, um, you know, you you've had a lot of people work with you in this. Um, you know. Help you get started in it, help you uh, run the show, produce the show. 
Um, but I, I think we would be remiss if we didn't talk about your silent partner yes. in, in all of these years, all of these shows, all of the work that's gone into it, all of the sacrifices and everything like that. Who Who is that? Well, that would, that would be Miss, Miss Tammy. <laughs> that, that would be your mother and my wife. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we came up on the 300th show. Mm-hmm. And uh, had just finished the new studio that we're in right now. Mm. And because we, prior to that, so I was in a little closet up on the other end of mm-hmm. this building. Mm-hmm. And I, as I was finishing up the building, uh, the, uh, the studio, and I'm thinking, 300 show, that's a special show. Who's it, who could be my guest? And I was thinking uh, maybe Bob, I'd be out at that time or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm coming across from the uh, storeroom that's right across from us, just crossing across there, and it just came to me, the most logical choice. Mm. As you say, the, the silent partner the people that the one that people don't see yeah but she's the one that has me coming in in the wee hours of the morning after i've been here doing radio Mm -hmm. and uh who has uh, sacrificed time and been the voice of encouragement Mm -hmm. and through all these years and uh, so she uh I knew I had to start working on her because this is not her thing at all. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm about Sarah being reluctant. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, this is not her thing at all. She, she's a very much behind the scenes type of person. So I began to drop little hints. And so finally, when it was getting close to it, I finally just asked her, she says, well, I knew you've been in for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty perceptive. So, so she came in and I remember I didn't have these nice microphones that we have now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had one of this little, on a little pedestal, and I had to put it on a paint <laughs> bucket <laughs> <laughs> over there. And uh, we talked about our lives together. Yeah. And, and uh, of course, 300 shows now, were, that was what, uh, what, 700 shows ago. Yeah. And uh, we talked about our children, the life that we've had, ministry, coming to Tallahassee, mm-hmm. pastoring the church, and uh, all the different the, the the things that that we've been involved in. We also talked about our, our personal life. She she talked about Anna because mm-hmm. when Anna was uh, was to, to be born, yeah. they made a diagnosis that she would be born with with Down syndrome, right. and our decision is it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. She, she'll right. be our daughter. We'll love her. Right. And uh, and so she talked about that, and that and she got kind of teary eyed about yeah. that. And uh, it was a great show. It really yeah. was because uh, she's. Uh, well, let me say this: in years of ministry together, you ask uh, my wife, "said Well, were you called to ministry?" And she'll say, "No, mm. no." She says, "I've been called to be his wife." Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she does that very, very well. Yeah. But she's always there with me to. To inspire me, and and the other thing is that she doesn't cut me any slack either. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like something; she'll tell it. <laughs> sure, and, uh, sure. So anyway, that's that's you're right. She's my side of partner yeah. through all of this. Well, well, that's great. Um, so again, one thousand shows, right? One thousand shows, almost nineteen years, um, and. and you know, this show has inspired a lot of people, but it's also so. it's it's yeah. also inspired a lot of uh, other things. You've got some spinoff shows, right? That you do. Right. Tell us tell us about those. Well, the daily broadcast was actually before the, mm. it, it, it came first. Okay, and I had done that back doing that for about two years before we started the Gospel on the Radio Saturday show. Sure. Uh, previous to that, back in the eighties, it was the, it was called Open Your Bible. That was for a five-minute daily broadcast mm-hmm. that I did on CVC. So I had gone back to CVC. Alan had helped me to get the uh, daily broadcast established. And then I pitched the idea of the talk show. Mm-hmm. Well, I knew there was going to be gospel music involved in it. And, of course, my family mm-hmm. <laughs> said, Daddy, you can't be playing that old music. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, look, this is my passion. If I try to do something else, people will see through me. Yeah. I mean, because because I love the the twang and the, mm-hmm. and the instruments and all that sort of mm-hmm. thing, and so I'd always have maybe a song or two in the broadcast. Well, one day I said to Doug Apple over ninety four point one because I I was doing the daily broadcast there at that time. I said well, I'd like to do a a, a music show, mm. a gospel music. Now we're talking about on a contemporary yeah. <laughs> radio station. Yeah, and he looked at me. He says, "Well, he says uh, during that time we may." lose a few listeners but we also may gain a few mm-hmm. and he was he was good to let me so we worked it out and started doing but what i did not know mm-hmm. he did not tell me this for probably two or three years later is that he used to manage a southern gospel music <laughs> station <laughs> he never told me that wow 
but he's always been an encouragement uh, to help me to do it. And of course, yeah. now he he does a lot of the production stuff behind the scenes mm-hmm. to get the show ready to air. Yeah. But also, not only that, and he's one day he says, "What about your your talk show?" He says, "Who's mm-hmm. who's doing that for you to get it out to the station?" I said, "Well, basically, what happens is after I get through doing the the show." Then I will go and take it because I usually have the daily broadcast and everything together. I make a little run, mm-hmm. and I go over to Wave ninety four. Then I'd go over to ninety seven nine and drop it off. All this in the middle of the morning, yeah. drop it off CDs. He says, "Let me do that." Mm-hmm. And so now this show will go to him. He'll do some some tweaking to it, and then he'll email it over to ninety seven nine, yeah. which has been a tremendous blessing to me. And then also uh, the daily broadcast. And then he also does the daily broadcast out to the other stations. He sends those out for me as well. And if you talk about uh, dreams and visions and people who were not there when you started, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know Doug Apple in You're those right. days. Right. But God has brought all that together. And this is what I say to people. I say, look, just step out. You won't, you, don't worry about, oh, he said, well, I'm not very good at it. You won't be when you first start. Right. But as you step out, God will help you to improve. You'll get better, and and He'll encourage you as you go, and He'll He'll bring things into your life that you never you, you could never anticipate. All of that. Right. Don't worry about that. God's looking for faithful people. That's right. People who just follow their dreams. You'll be amazed. Just right. you know, He doesn't call the equipped; He equips the call. Right. The, the, yeah. that, that old song says, "It is no secret mm. what God can do." Right. And uh, that's true. It's just no secret. God can do incredible things if we allow him to do so. Yeah. So we are getting close to the end yeah. of, of, of show number 1,000. Right. Um, and again, huge milestone. We're, we're so proud of you, your your dedication to it, um, your drive, um, your and your desire to just... To be to, to to want to minister to people yeah. and allow ministries to share what they are doing in the community for the kingdom. Right. Um, so we got about a, a minute and a half here. Um, is there one last thing? Yeah, you, simply this: if you're listening out there and you're involved in ministry, mm, call me. I'll yeah. get you on the show because I, I want you to talk about your passion. Yeah. For the for the kingdom of God, five six seven. One seven zero three area code eight five zero yeah five six seven one seven zero three call me and we'll we pre record so you don't have to worry about missing a Sunday if you're a pastor we pre record during the week and we'll have the show ready to go on Sunday morning six o'clock here on ninety seven nine WTSM and let me just say this I appreciate those folks so yeah. much for allowing this to happen yeah because uh, obviously we couldn't do it if, if yeah. they if they weren't so generous to allow us to do this show so, right yeah. well as we wrap up. And uh, we understand that getting to this point, 1,000 shows is, is a huge milestone. You couldn't have done it by your by yourself. You've had plenty of people to, to help you along the way, none more so than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do, we, can, can you just close us out with a quick prayer and blessing upon everybody who has Amen. gotten us to Father this Father God, point. I thank you, Lord, for this, for, for this great thing that you've done. And, I, and I, lay, I lay it at the feet of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God. And Lord, I pray over all of those who have listened today, Father, a blessing in their lives. Watch over them. Put a hedge about them, Father God. I thank you for my family. And I thank you, Father God, for all that you do. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening, Tallahassee. This has been the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show.